Hello, so today we are going to discuss Petal Meninger Aubrey, which is one of the most important topic for 5 marks. And uh, I'm going to discuss main points here and uh, let's start. Now, uh, here I've drawn a simple diagram, uh, which uh, I've practiced almost 3 to 4 times. So you can also practice and you can also draw an exam if you have time. It is not that much complicated as it seems because... I've drawn it and I know you can draw it if you really have that much speed and this will be a distinguishing point if you draw it. Okay, now let's uh, talk about the main points here I've drawn. Now here I've uh, shown the skull. Uh, imagine this is the midline and the other side of skull I've not drawn. This is the skull. This is uh, the cap of the skull is removed and the inner view as you see of skull is somewhat like this uh, I hope I'm making sense okay so uh, this is the inner view of skull now the the green colored thing that I've shown here is is foramen spinosum okay now you have to remember this foramen spinosum out of foramen spinosum comes the middle meningeal artery Okay, now you can see here, this is the greater wing of sphenoid. I have mentioned here this whole wing like thing. This is the temporal bone. This here is the parietal bone here. This is the parietal bone. This is the temporal bone. This is the greater wing of sphenoid. In the front, we have uh, the frontal bone and um, here we have occipital bone. Okay, now, um, now as you now as you can see here the red mark the prominent red thing that i've shown here is the middle meningeal artery okay now you can see that it comes out of the green colored foramen spinosum it goes further and then it bifurcates into two branches as shown this as i've shown here this one is the parietal branch and this here we have the frontal branch okay now uh, the frontal branch is uh, longer and uh, it has comparatively more clinical sig significance as compared to the parietal branch but as far as the theory is concerned both both the branches are important for you okay now yes uh, this one this purple color mark is very very important where these uh, you can see here that this greater wing of sphenoid this greater wing of sphenoid this parietal bone and the temporal bone and the frontal bone are meeting at a purple colored point i've shown which is known as terion terion which is very much important and you have to remember write it somewhere or in your mind which is very much important and you have to remember that it is it has a very important clinical significance which i will be telling you later on okay so just remember uh, right now that uh, Terion is the name of the point. Okay, now let's go to the next um, next part that is origin. Okay, so what is uh, the origin of the middle meningeal artery? It is a branch of first part of maxillary artery. This is a theory point of view, and you have to remember it. I can't show it in a diagram. And uh, this branch is given in the infratemporal fossa. Okay, so. I can show you that that yeah so it is given in the infratemporal fossa I hope you would be knowing what is infratemporal fossa okay now next is course and relations in the infratemporal fossa artery runs upwards in medially deep to lateral pterygoid muscle and superficial to sim so uh, sphenomandibular ligament I'm sorry so in the infratemporal fossa if you don't know what's in infratemporal fossa it's like uh, you have here the eye wall and here there is zygo zygomatic arc. I'm not very good at drawing but this is the eye wall and this is the zygomatic arc and here somewhere is the temporal fossa here and below the zygomatic arc we have the infratemporal fossa. Okay so in the infratemporal fossa artery runs upwards and medially deep to lateral pterygoid muscle and superficial to sphenomandibular ligament which is again a theory point 
so you have to remember now next is here it passes between loop formed by two roots of auricular auricular temporal nerve now i have shown diagram here this green color is the suppose the auricular temporal nerves this is a loop you can see here that a loop is formed by the auricular temporal nerve and this here the red colored is the artery it passes between the loop formed by the auricular temporal nerve this is also one of the second important point in the middle meningeal artery now let's see next yes now the again we were talking about how it enters the inside of the intracranial cavity right so it enters the middle cranial fossa through foramen spinosum okay here i have shown in green foramen spinosum in the middle cranial fossa it has extra dural course it means that it runs outside the dura mater okay so second point is first point was that uh, that it uh, rises in the infratemporal fossa runs deep to lateral tegmental muscle and something that then auricular temporal nerve loop formed by auricular temporal nerve then the uh, then the intracranial course now what would be the intracranial course that it enters to the foramen spinosum in the middle cranial fossa it has extra dural course that is it uh, runs outside the dura mater now the fourth point that comes is that the here the artery runs forwards and laterally for a variable distance grooves squamous temporal bone and then it divides into frontal and parietal branches so the heart rate runs forwards and laterally for a variable distance here you can see that the artery runs sorry yes here you can see that the artery is running forwards and laterally this is the anterior side this is the posterior side this is lateral as i've already told you this is the midline so it is running forwards and laterally this is the squamous part of temporal bone here this is i've written temporal bone so it grooves this squamous part of temporal bone and and then it divides into frontal and parietal branches which i've shown you here it divides into frontal this one and parietal this one okay now let's see the next okay now uh we have seen that it divides into frontal and okay now frontal or anterior branch is larger as i already earlier told you frontal or uh, anterior branch is larger first it runs forwards and laterally towards lateral end of lesser wing of sphenoid i'll show you in diagram okay so here you can see that frontal or anterior branch is larger it is running towards the uh, towards the, uh, le the, to the towards the lateral side of lesser wing of sphenoid okay so here it is running and then it divides into two okay then um, towards the lateral end of lesser wing of sphenoid and here it causes inner aspect of terion so let me remind you that very important point this is the terion okay and uh, here four bones meet this is the frontal bone the parietal bone the temporal bone and the greater wing of sphenoid and here this point is sorry i'll mark it with another color this point you see here is this point you see here the meeting point of all the four bones is the terion okay terion which is very much important okay so here it causes in no aspect of terion terion is the meeting point of frontal temporal greater wing of sphenoid and parietal bones as i've already told you then it runs upwards and backwards a little in front of central circus of cerebral hemisphere um this is also a theory point which you have to remember it runs upwards and backwards little in front of central circus of cerebral hemisphere so it is closely related to motor area this is also very much important why because if anything happens to this artery and if there is hemorrhage it will directly compress the motor area 
which is extremely dangerous because if the motor area gets affected anyhow then directly the motor motor component of our motor function of brain will will get uh, will get affected and which is very much dangerous okay now let's talk about the parietal branch the second branch parietal branch runs backwards over or near superior temporal circus of cerebrum about 4 cm above the level of zygomatic arc it ends in front of posterior inferior angle of parietal bone so i'll show you here this is the posterior inferior angle of parietal bone this is the posterior inferior angle of parietal bone okay so it ends somewhere near the posterior inferior angle of parietal bone and and the branches the middle meningeal artery supplies only small branches to dura mater uh, it is predominantly a periosteal artery supplying bone and red marrow red bone marrow in diploid now we hope you guys might be knowing what is diploid we have bone which has this kind of structure we have one two they we, they also call it as tables two tables and in the center we have the red bone marrow so our skull if we take a cross section of the skull then we'll be viewing something like this center the red bone marrow and the two tables of osteocytes okay so so this is somewhat the arrangement so it is predominantly a periosteal artery supplying a bone and red marrow bone marrow in diploid which i've shown you and it also gives off ganglionic branches to trigeminal ganglion petrosal branches for greater petrosal nerve temporal branches superior tympanic for tensor tympani and stomatic branches ganglionic branches petrosal temporal superior tympanic and anastomotic which you have to remember as a theory point next is applied applied is very much important here because uh, because uh, this commonly occurs in road accidents whenever uh, the person falls on the sideways and the terion is ruptured then uh, this happens now i'll show you in the other thing like suppose this is the skull of a person this is the eye socket this is the zygomatic arc then here is somewhere do we have eraser yes so if this is the skull this is the socket this is the zygomatic arc then here somewhere is the terion like zygom uh, it is a bit upwards than the zygomatic arc so it if a view if you view a person from sideways like this is the mouth and this is the hair this is the ears then it would be somewhere here so you can say that if a person falls on the sideways and this point is affected you are also have to sometimes um, pay attention if uh, there is a case like this so you have if this part of uh, te- if a fracture is a terion then it is life threatening if not treated as soon as possible because the uh, blood will start collecting near the i mean under the skull bone and this will compress the brain there there would be hemorrhage and this will compress the brain and the motor area of brain so fracture of terion can be life threatening because it overlies the frontal branch of middle meningeal vessels which lies in grooves on the internal aspect of lateral wall of calvaria okay so that was all thank you so much like and subscribe my channel